Hey, and welcome to the next part of the PowerShell fundamental series of videos. So in this one, I'm going to be talking to you about objects and get member. So let's start with the command get member. We're going to be looking at its help information. Uh, get member is the commandlet that is actually going to tell us, hey, what is being out put there in the output of the multiple commandlets and functions? Now, everything's PowerShell is actually an object. So uh, initially, let's just look at the help information here. We can see, hey, it gets properties and methods of an object. Uh, in addition to that, it also gets me the type. Uh, here we can also see the syntax of it. It's a very simple syntax, uh, so it's a very simple commandlet. Now, one of the things that we have to take into consideration is that we can pipe into get member, so we can get the information. Uh, also, if we want to get, for example, out of an object, the static methods of that object, specifically if it is a .NET class, we have to specify the static parameter to be able to see that stuff. And also, we can specify if we want to just get specific members out of a object itself. Um, so this is quite helpful for us. So now let's just take a look at the full information here. Uh, Microsoft has been very nice to us and given us quite a bit of information. Uh, here we can look at different parameters. One of the things that I want you to take a very good look is at the force parameter. Uh, it is actually we can actually just get all of the information. In fact, one of the things that Microsoft does is that each object inside of PowerShell itself, uh, PowerShell actually shows you what Microsoft decided that you wanted to see. Uh, so we have the PS base, which is the original object, the object from directly from .NET, from a com object, a DSI object, any of those first class type of objects inside of PowerShell. We're going to be seeing the PS base, which is that raw object itself without any modifications. We have PS adapted, which is what we see, which is what Microsoft decides that, hey, this is what we want you to see. And we also have PS extended. PS extended is actually where Microsoft extends an object. Now, one of the things that we I want you to know is, is that we can pipe into um, the get member itself. We do this via the input object. We also can specify multiple member types if we want to get those. Uh, here we can see the list of those member types. Um, we have the name. Uh, we can just specify static. So we have quite a bit of information here on help. I do invite you to go through those and also go through the multiple examples are very good examples here. So one of the things that I want you to look right now is we're just going to get a process and we're going to get our own PowerShell process here. Now when we get this process, we can see we have an object that got outputted. But what are we really getting? So if we look into get member itself, and we pipe it in, we see that we're getting a system diagnostic process. So now we know that we have a process that we're working with. And you can see we have aliases of properties. So we can have those, which actually represent other properties. We have events, which is stuff that we can actually subscribe to. Uh, so when something happens to this object, we can take an action on it if we want. Uh, we have methods, which is stuff that we can have the process do for our behalf or do itself. We can see that the method, how to call it, what would be the output, uh, we have multiple output that actually take multiple parameters. Uh, with different results here, we have one that presents a Boolean. Uh, if we give it an integer, here we have another one that doesn't return anything if we don't give it anything. Now we have properties, which is information about the object itself. Now one of the things that we're going to see here with properties is that we're looking at the type of property. So for example, here at base property, we see that is an integer. And also, uh, we have the name for that property itself, and we have uh, either a get or we have a get or a set. This means that we can get that property value or we can actually set that value ourselves. We can modify it. That's what, what we see on get and set. They're kind of self-descriptive. Also, we have script properties. Script properties are special properties that actually just run uh, a series of PowerShell commands against the object itself and whatever is that value, that's what we actually get back 
to our cells here we have this information get equals this which is the object itself and then we have uh, it goes into several nested objects inside of the property to give us that value so this is also another way that we can get that information that we have to kind of be aware of uh, depending if we are only selecting uh, or using this uh, specifically to help us, let's say, with C-Sharp. Uh, because this is just an extension, something that PowerShell extended to the object. So this would be one of those PS extended properties that we're seeing. So let's do something here. Let's do get member, member type, and we're going to get all of its properties. And let's look all of those that start with the main. So here we have main module, main windows handle. So we can actually filter um, for, by properties if we wanted to. Now let's do something different. Let's look at the methods. And we can hear that we have multiple methods that we can work with. Um, here we have the wait for exit one that I mentioned before. We have wait for input idle. And you can see that we can actually specify multiple values. We get their outputs. So in definition, we get quite a bit of information on the methods themselves and stuff that we can do to them. Let's look at events. So I can take action when something gets disposed or when something exits. Uh, if I specify properties, you can see I get all of the properties. I get no property, alias property, script property. All of this stuff is just properties of the object itself. They behave the same way even if they have different numbers uh, or different names, sorry. So let's do something. Let's format list this is something very important for you guys to always remember when you want to see all of the values of all of the properties use format list property asterisk because as you can see some of them actually have values others do not um, and this is a, I, I like kind of stressing this and remembering people about it so let's take a look at an array and how this looks in get member so we have multiple types here we have one we have a string we have a double and let's pipe this into get member and to see what we actually have here do we have an array do we have oh no it's actually telling me each component of that array so as you can see i have a double hmm i have a string and i have an integer so it actually didn't give me the array it gave me all of its different components of the array itself um what happens if I have multiple of the same type? And one of the things that we can see is that get members smart enough to say, hey, you only have three different types inside of here. So you only have an integer, you have a string, and you have a double. Now, what, what happens is that the pipe actually is processing each one of those objects. What if we want to see the collection itself? So one thing we can do is we can just save this into an array. We can, because we just want to look at the array itself. And let's do get member uh, input object, and I just give it that variable. Or I just could have done input object and an empty array. And here I can see all of the methods and properties specifically for a collection for an array. Uh, so do keep this in mind. This is one of the things, that one of those gotchas that really hits people as they're working on. Let's look at this copy to um, method. As you can see, it couldn't fit the uh, the window there. So one of the things I can actually just do is copy to, instead of putting parentheses, I remove those, and I can see all of the over, overloads, which is the multiple different ways and the outputs uh, that I get from each one of those. This is something very helpful also when we're working with methods. Remember we were talking about classes, and what happens if we pipe this into get member, and we forget to put the static, huh? I don't know math doesn't have assembly or 
get type or get property or get events or any of that stuff. Oh, I didn't got anything for math. I got runtime, huh? Because I forgot to specify static, which is one of the parameters that we saw in the help. So let's do something here. Let's do get member input object math. Ah, still getting the same. Now we're going to look at the static method itself. Static, and here we can see, oh, now I have all of the properties that I wanted for math. So do, do keep this in mind. This is something important for you uh, when you're working and you're troubleshooting and you're tired that is going to happen.